Hi everybody, this is Sarah, and this video is Gig Life, mostly about Instacart, Pearls of Wisdom. Here we go. So, I live on Cape Cod, and I do Instacart seven days a week. I'm ready to go at 6 a.m., and, you know, it, it just is, it's, I call it fishing, because you never know what you're going to get. And so, usually, well, on a great day, you might get some things that drop right at six when the store opens, but lately they've been coming in later. I don't know. And just beware, sometimes they throw a dog or two from the night before into it. It happened to me just the other day. I had a double order. There was like a $22 tip with it. So I said, well, even if there's a non-tipper, that's a pretty good tip. Uh, I'll still do it. And so... I'm going through the items. It's, you know, 6 a.m. And it's like, and they're both local um, women. So it's not like, you know, that it's a summer person and I don't know them. These are local people. The first one had sushi. Now, sushi is not ready at 6 a.m. If it is there after 6 a.m., it sat there all night. And I don't think that you want sushi that sat there all night. So the sushi people, you know, it's not really ready until like 9 or 10. Another, the other order had a roasted chicken at 6 a.m. Now, in a good day, they might be ready around 9 if the a la carte person, you know, got them going early enough. But we don't really, you know, say that they're going to be ready until 10 a.m. Just to see why a cover your chicken. And so each order had that. So I've got one with sushi and then I've got another one that wants the roasted chicken. It's 6 a.m. They also want wild caught sockeye salmon from the fish counter and wild caught Pacific cod. Why don't you have Cape Cod cod? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so the fish counter isn't open either. You know, at 6 a.m., what you're looking at for the meat counter and the fish counter, for those, you know, like butcher, fish market type fishes, fishes and meats, it takes a while for them to set it up. It's not up and running until at least after 8 a.m. And so my gripe is with Instacart for like letting these people think that they're going to get like fresh sushi and a hot chicken it's six in the morning. Ain't gonna no way happen, honey. No, girly, it's not. So anyway, I'm looking at that. And then it has a couple of cases of water and four 12 packs of like soda water and a Diet Coke. Okay. So at that point, I'm, I'm checking with Instacart and I'm saying there's no heavy pay for this order. And so the snarky person at Instacart, usually they're pretty good, but they say, no, we, we aren't going to give it to you until after you shop the order. And I said, I'm not going to shop the order until after I see the heavy pay included because I have called for heavy pay bumps. And they said, you'll get them. I don't know if it will show up right away, but it will show up at some point today and it never does. And then you go to go back and it's like, was that order for Kathy? Was it for Kristen? Was it for, and I can't remember. And so it's like, there goes the $5 bump for the heavy pay. And so anyway, it's like, that was a dog from Friday, you know, from the night before this was Saturday. And so I had to cancel it. But at that point I'd lost like 30 something minutes in dealing with all of it. I had already sent my greeting and then I go to do it. So anyway, so say I get an order, I go in and I check the metrics as best I can. That was another lesson learned. I've been doing it for four years. I still have the moments, right? And then they become aha moments. And then it's like, never happen again. <laughs> so <clears throat> I check the order. First, you know, how many heavy items are there? I mean, there's, you know, I'll handle a couple of, you know, 12 packs and a case of water and things like that. But when you get into like a Costco, which we don't have here on the Cape, order with like six cases of water and it says heavy pay. No, no, no. That's like not my, that's warehouse pay, right? So 
check your order, go through it all. Are there those specialty items? You know, like, are they looking for, you know, an anise ball, a fennel ball to do some sort of cold potato leek soup type thing? And the truck hasn't come in yet and they haven't unloaded it. And there's, you know, if, if it has obscure items, just beware. I find for me, when I'm doing out of stock items, that the good items that, um, you know, if you have a lot of items and there's some out of stocks, then it's like the blow is softer to them when you tell them that what they are looking for is not available, as opposed to those you just think you're going to finish up and do one more order to like get the promo and it's got 10 items and like you're working on the fourth thing that's out of stock out of the 10 items and it's like, what a nightmare. What a nightmare. So here, here's a pearl of, pearls of wisdom tip for you. Make sure you have enough points, percentages, to do some canceling of those batches when they become just too much. Don't, don't fret about that use those things and you know as you do more batches the cancellation rate goes down don't be afraid to use it it when you hit one of those orders and don't you sometimes just get a hunch don't you get a hunch when you're doing an order that this one is just not going to be worked out fine now that one the aha moment for me saturday morning is like oh yeah this double dog was left over, not a devil dog from Drake's, a double dog order. And this was left over from like Friday night. And it's Saturday morning, they're dropping it and make me feel all kinds of special. And I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of orders that disappear as a single order and come back as part of a double or a triple. You know, say the tip was 10, but it was like not that great of an order. And <clears throat> suddenly... It shows up in the order with another one and the tip doesn't go any higher than 10 because you're doing a non-tipper, right? No tip, no trip. Always guaranteed nightmare. If you haven't learned that yet, you will learn that and you will never ever say, well, it's close to home. I'll just try it out. It's okay. You know, I just need that one more. Don't. Don't. I don't call myself a pro, but I do call myself experienced, and I just don't do no tips orders. Nope, no tip, no trip. So don't be afraid to do it. Now, <clears throat> I know that um, Gary, Tetris dude, Instacart chopper from out of Texas and California, I think Arizona too, sometimes he'll call and have a batch removed. Now, I know some other people have done that. I've never done that. Like when you have one and you just, the other one is just kind of sketchy and it's like, well, this one wouldn't be bad if it weren't for that one. I know some people have done that. I think they might frown upon it. They might, if they see a pattern, they might not like you, the algorithm. I don't know. Maybe they press a button, you know, give her, give her lousy batches. I don't know. But just... You know, I have no idea of the mechanics of Instacart. I just go along to get along. So I always check the metrics, the miles. <clears throat> you know, when you pull it up, you can kind of see on the map, it, and it says it's 5.2 miles, and you're going, well, that's not bad. But you pull it up, and after you've been doing it for a while and you know locations, you'll know that, wow, this one has you going over here to this town. And that is a whole lot more than 5.2 miles. So Instacart is sneaky that way. They might give you the 5.2 distance, but they leave off the 13.1 that is going to eat up two, two and a half hours of your shop. And even if it's a great batch, a great double with a great tip, you know, by the time you put two and a half into that amount of money, you know, you might end up with a $13 an hour job. And it's like, mm -mm, mm -mm. it's not like I'm trying to make $35 an hour with everything I do, but I do want to make, you know, a decent amount of money for what I'm doing. And if, can you imagine a no tipper with like 13 miles? Mm, no. 
So be careful what you accept. And, but then also keep your cancellation rate down. So if you do find yourself in a dog situation, do it. But I find on the busy days when I get one of those, you cancel and then there's nothing. It's almost like they know how long the first batch of like 6 a.m. people, it's going to take them like all 90 minutes or something like that. And then they start dropping. I really do feel that they um, get you going that way. Now, see, it's five o'clock. But that was the Instacart drop chime. So that's why I went to look. But it wasn't like I got that CBS run. So just be careful because Instacart is still sneaky. They might have made a lot of nice changes in what they do, but they also still are very sneaky and probably not to be trusted a whole lot, you know, but trust, trust your gut, trust this gut and trust your head with hunches. If you feel like something's going to be a nightmare, it probably will be. The more experienced you become, the more you can say, Oh, they're pulling one on me, you know, and they probably are. So just be very, very careful. I'm so glad to be back. I hope this microphone works. My little friend called Blue, and I will see you here the next time on Gig Life, Pearls of Wisdom, talking about Instacart. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.